I just feel like pointing out it hasn't come up much because it's been off camera, but I, I have been naming <clears throat> all of my saves manually at the end of every session. Buckle up, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Ledger of suffering. Help wear gun. Friendly people. Book talk. Not so haunted. Need sleep. End of day one. Who is number eight? Ask her about reality. <laughs> Talk to fat man. Phrenology tattoos. War hero. But seriously, get the body down. <laughs> Thank you, bullet. I, I don't remember these these uh, these file names, so it's actually funny to me. Because I don't remember the context for half of this. Getting late. Day three. I didn't even label day two, apparently. Fishing village. Idiot. Doom spiral. Willow people. Karaoke soon. Stories don't match. It all comes tumbling down. Shot trajectories. Elevator going up. Wompty Dompty. Spider Crab Man. I didn't break it, I swear. Number one with a bullet. Ruby, 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 Ruby. So, <laughs> Ruby's drugs. Too rich for reality. Signatures. Time for day five. Figures. An appointment for gun. Basically, Icarus. The end of the world. Play Suzeranti. Point of no return. Mandatory whirling and got new holes. <laughs> oh, not even meant to be seen necessarily. Some of them are like information about what's going to happen next and what to do next. Sometimes like a little reminder. Some of them are just fucking nonsense, but most of them have context. So have fun trying to remember what half those things are, I guess, if that's your jam. Is uh, Kim going to react to me doing this? These papers bear the stamp of the RCM. They appear to be fragments of the lieutenant's paperwork, half finished. We make out notes on this and other recent cases. I had got open the door to your room. He closes the notes. You were running a low bacterial fever last night. He closed the notes when I tried looking at them. So, until now, he hasn't protested that I walked into his room, but now he's like, okay, you're just going through my shit. <laughs> this is... I know this is your jam, but come on. I thought I was dead for a moment. Back there, on the plaza? I think you very nearly had a heart attack. Alcoholism has damaged you more than bullets have. There's a small pause. We should go. You cannot- yeah, okay. I figured I'd- End the episode just in case, but no, we can't. Oh, I have to go all the way around. I can't open his door from the inside, apparently. That's a hell of a line, by the way. Alcoholism has damaged you more than bullets have. Not wrong. Alcoholism's brutal. <clears throat> I say that from the perspective of somebody that's de dealt with alcoholics a fair amount. Ouch, that leg hurts. Maybe if you don't run, it'll be okay. Did I just run? I think I did, didn't I? Shit. There's gonna be consequences for running now, aren't there? Looks like she left something on the table. Next to stacks of bills, you see a note. A few lines jotted down in large, uneven handwriting, just as the rider was about to rush out the door. I'm sorry I fucked everyone over. P.S. I didn't kill him. PPS. Gift upstairs. A gift. The lieutenant turns to the staircase suspiciously, looking for any signs of other, another presence in the shadows above. What could this gift be? I am not drawing my gun yet, but I don't like gifts. He says he's not, but his hand moves instinctively towards the holster as he studies the note. Relax, not everyone is out to trap you. Seems she left in a hurry. It's hardly surprising. You look at her rough, jagged handwriting on the note. She was a she was in a rush, but not panicked, deliberate, focused. Much like the thing with the hanging that happened, which if she if she is telling the truth about not killing him, then this is not the first time he, she's been very deliberate in a, in a situation where she should be in a hurry. Where she keeps her cool. She seems to just not be somebody who loses her cool. 
The medicine's cabinet is empty. Not even a toothbrush. Pity. She really cleaned this out. Mm-hmm. Lieutenant nods. She certainly had her priorities straight when she was packing. I was kind of hoping the gift would be in here. I always took you for more of a drunk than a chemical abuser, Lieutenant Jefreiter. He says as though it's self-evident. Should we go? It's not quite what I meant, but okay. I guess that's the only... That's the main interpretation, though. A red thread made of nylon. It leads out to the room and onto the roof. Is it... Is it... Is that the trajectory of where the bullet went in? It is, isn't it? She's recreating the trajectory, probably so that we end up knowing that the trajectory points to the island. Which I'll point out once again. She's in this window. How the fuck does the trajectory pointing this way lead to that island ever? Or really most of the locations, because this is similar to the island in trajectory. I almost feel like some parts of this map... This map must not just be entirely right, or... I don't know. I don't think that makes sense. But yeah, as a reminder, the, uh... I know it's all preachy and all that, but uh, I've, I've seen the, uh, toll that alcoholism takes in the more long-term on people. And it's a pretty fucked up way to go. And it is a way to go. It's not just a matter, a matter like, people think about the moment-to-moment -moment mistakes involved in alcoholism. And just, like, how... It affects your behavior and so on and your memory and like the more immediate stuff but like the long-term uh, impacts of alcoholism are actually pretty terrifying like shit along the lines of like oh my liver doesn't filter chemicals out of my body anymore so my brain is shutting down and the only way that they can fix it is by <clears throat> removing that chemical every day from my body and my gut is bloating out because of all that stuff also not like filtering so like they have to physically remove and filter through your body every day or you're you'll suffer permanent brain damage and a bunch of other problems till you're just all gone it's always it's a uh, worrying to find out your your characters this this far gone and that you're inhabiting not just having a habit that's unhealthy it's one thing to just have to hear like, oh, your character has an unhealthy relationship with alcohol that interferes with his work, but we're well beyond that point. This became permanent probably decades ago. That's the, I think the scariest things in life are the really slow, insidious things that you can't really account for. And you can't really be aware that it's of the toll it's doing in the mo in the moment, and that's how people fall into the trap of it causing the most long-term damage. Hence, all the people that uh, everyone with diabetes and heart disease and these other things that also are the results of long-term poor decision making. I guess I've just never I've, it's, 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 it's alcohol's always been a tough sell for me. Both because just like being aware of its effects firsthand, but also like just knowing that it's like it's it's just something that is just bad for your body for the most part. Like everything, like food is something that you have to eat, and it's just the the bummer of like the food not being as good as other food, for example. But alcohol is just optional and detrimental. You see the same two neon lights, shape, uh, neon lit shapes, a man and a woman. Now, only now, a red thread bisects the room, pointing from the antenna outside to the cupboard on the wall. This is ballistics. She has left a trajectory for us. Lieutenant tests the thread with his finger, drawn taut. It rebounds instantly. A ray of backward motion explodes from his mouth to the roof outside. A prime to then widen into a radius of locations in Martinez. B prime, B double prime, and B triple prime. So we had this before, but we had two problems. 
we didn't necessarily know exactly where uh we didn't know exactly where he was when he got shot that's the first problem although we had a, a decent idea because we did the visual calculus recreation there and we had a description of what they were doing but the problem is that the bullet went through the window and the window is this giant ass square and so if, if we had the original window we could see the bullet hole and, and do something about that but we didn't even get the bullet hole all we had to go by was the uh, fact that this was the window the bullet went through because they replaced the entire thing so the bullet hole could have been basically anywhere on the entire window which massively inflated the number of trajectories possible if you have the location where he got shot and the bullet hole then you don't really have a lot of ambiguity anymore where does the thread lead? It suggests the bullet came from the extreme upper quadrant of possible angles, from a point beyond the roof, the triple prime. The island in the bay. Did she try and tell us the shot came from the islet? He nods. Unless she thinks the perpetrator was standing on the ring antenna. That that it was, uh, that is where the thread seems to point. How did she know how to do this? It was there that night. She would have known precisely where the bullet hole was in the glass. She had a long time to think about it after, standing on that roof, staring at the glass. It also looks like there may be more to her skill set than we know. The question is, should we trust her? This is her way of saying she's sorry. I find that hard to believe, but at this point, what difference does it make? There's only one point of origin we haven't ruled out yet. So it is. For a second, he seems... tired. Maybe we need to go to the island. The wind blows in from the open window. The lieutenant sighs, looking into the cold distance across the water. I'm going to the island. Are you in? Of course, he nods. Of course I'm in. He takes a second to gather himself and says, How do we get there? Joyce Messier had her sloop, but she's gone. Lillian, the net picker, she's tarring her boat. Ah, yes, of course, the village. Let's go. Welcome to the walking only portion of this playthrough where we walk for the rest of the game. Oh, it's going to be agony. <laughs> But I would not put it past this game to punish you for running. The thread is tied to the antenna. Yeah, there's the other end. I, don't, I hope I didn't run yet earlier, but maybe I did. Just out of reflex. I don't know if the little, like, ah, don't run icon came up uh, because I accidentally ran around when I was leaving Kim's room. Or if it happened because that's just what it says as you're leaving your room, no matter what. We're trying to recover. And it's like this game this game has a certain attention to detail that I wouldn't be completely shocked if that actually resulted in something. Like if running caused health damage or kept resetting your recovery. Leading to a situation where uh We kind of need to check in with everybody, don't we? Almost almost anyone who's still alive could have a reaction to what happened. But the, uh, <clears throat> for all I know, you need to recover for some final confrontation where if you're still wounded, you could be in deep shit. Oh, you're up. It's good to see you back on your feet. Did you like your room? I cleaned it for you. I did. Thank you. Big improvement. You're, wel <clears throat> you're welcome. I thought it would be nice for you to wake up in a clean place after you, let's be fair, defended this establishment and its clientele from gunfire. I give credit, credit where credit is due. 
And that, sir, was a nice shot. I was watching until you hit him. Crawled inside then, bullets started flying. Anyway. He clears his throat. I wish you a quick recovery. Also, he raises his finger, you and your partner are staying here free now. This establishment supports cops. The, the stay is free, the drinks are not. He adds. Just felt I needed to specify that. Where'd everyone go? Oh, you know. He looks around at the empty place. People don't tend to stick around after shootouts. Turns out they're not good for business. All the more reason that we get to stay for free, I guess, if no one else is around. What happened to the man in the sunglasses? He shakes his head. I don't remember everyone who comes here. And many people wear sunglasses inside lately. Must be a fad. Okay, I have to mention. When it happened, you were right out there on the balcony. Yeah, I was. Yeah. He nods. Trying to remain aloof. That's because I'm a badass. Yeah, I guess you are. Yeah, I don't know. He feels the need to explain himself. Clients were panicking. And also, I guess I sort of found out that I don't give a shit if I die. He means it. It's not just boasting. It's something he discovered about himself stepping onto that balcony. Alright, thanks. No problem. He looks around the empty establishment. They'll come back, they always do. <clears throat> there was a death... Ah, oh, damn it. Can I turn off running? So, oh, this is not an empty establishment, just so we're clear. There's just a few people missing. <clears throat> nope, they don't care. Even the guy with the glasses is here. Who's even missing? Besides the dead people. Yeah, that was half of your group. Seeing you approach, the bruised man raises his beer in welcome. Crazy motherfucker. Didn't think you had that fury in you, but I guess I've misjudged a lot of people lately. That was one hell of a shot. Hell of a shot. The fucks did not expect that. He looks at you with unmistakable respect. I guess what I'm trying to say here is thank you for intervening, fellas. That was mighty brave of you. He extends his hand. This is big. It's as big a thank you as Titus Hardy can muster under any circumstances. Shake his hand and nod in silence. Now how can I help you? His grip is strong and friendly. I'm sorry about the people you lost. His bruised face stiffens. Theo was old. I think he'd be pretty happy with the way he went. Never could imagine him withering away in a sick bed. But Angus, he gulps. He was just a stupid kid. Didn't realize the mess he'd gotten into, trusted me. Still, the balls on that kid went down fighting for someone else's shit like a fat angry bear. Here it comes. The last one's the worst one. He only deals with it by drinking copious amounts of 8% beer. And Glenn? Glenn was my friend. Best I've ever had. I love that crazy homo like my old brother. My own brother. He takes a sip of his beer. We're all fucked without him, but what do you do? This job is shit. Hold on, where's that shanky fella? Dennis? That poor little rat is dead too. He shakes his head. I always thought he'd run, but no. He stayed. Stupid, brave fella. I thought three people died. Four? They were good people. I'm sorry it went like that. Yeah, well, yeah. Memento Mori, right? Memento Mori means remember that you must die. Oh, I was about to... S <laughs> it actually says that, because Encyclopedia came up. I was just reciting it out of memory, because of... yeah. 
Wow, that was just basically the exact words they used, too. M Memento Mori, or Remember That You Must Die, is a slogan various religious or orders have thrown around since the dawn of mankind. To, em to emphasize the vanity of earthly life and the transient nature of all earthly pursuits. In essence, it means one should live virtuously in this life to live better in the afterlife. Yeah, uh, totally. Totally. Absolutely. Today I'm going to get drunk, eat good food, and bet a good-looking gal. Because tomorrow a motor carriage might run me over. Or you might die of a heart failure or syphilis. Hey, hey, fuck you for ruining a beautiful idea. What's going to happen to the Hardy Boys now? I guess I'll take a closer look at our union members. They're bound to be some ambitious fellows who'd love to nothing more than advancing social democracy by busting some heads. Might even ask Tibbs if he's tired of replacing windows and maybe wants to have some fun with his brother. He pauses. Anyway, don't you worry. As long as Titus Hardy's standing, there will be Hardy boys. Do you know what happened to Clache? Don't know, don't care. I'll be glad if I never see that fucking woman again. Titus, after all we've been through, level with me. You really liked her, didn't you? Nope. He did. Okay, got it. He nods and takes another sip of whiskey. His clenched jaw says otherwise. If anything, it's another sco uh, score for him to settle. One day, it'll have to wait for now. Any idea what I should do now? Judging by the sight of you, he looks at your bandages, I'd suggest crawling into bed with a bottle of whiskey in one hand and a big tit in the other. Yeah, go pay Monica a visit in Jamrock. She's got a knack for making men forget about their worries. Biggest pair of milkers in all of Ravishall. Hell, you both look like you could use some feminine company right now. Thank you for your advice, Eugene. And you too, Elaine. I do always appreciate the good use of the expression milkers. It sincerely amuses him how hard these guys typecast themselves. You're welcome, Bino Claude. Titus's response is completely unironic. You're all right in my book. So long, fellows. Been good. I'd be good so I don't have to come back here again. Take care, coppers. He says with a warm smile. You two look after yourselves now. Death passed on you today, but men don't get that lucky twice. He nods to you and then to the lieutenant. Copo loco. And the, uh, normal cop, I guess. Good luck on Jamrock. Scars make the best tattoos, they say. Thanks for getting involved, guys. Not a lot of cops would step in that line of fire, but you did. And if you ever feel like the uniform's holding you back, I got a few vaccines. Oh. <laughs> I heard those vaccines. <clears throat> like it's a vaccine for the problem, but no. I've got a few vacancies. You would make one hard hardy boy copper. Well, we've completely turned around. I suppose that's one out, put, out outcome of the fact that like the whole reason he was opposing me in the first place was because he was being manipulated and was serving to a whole bunch of groups of people. Hello. Un jour je serai de retour près de toi. I miss? Oh. One day I will return to your side. The graffito has been painted over the traces of the fight that took place here. It smells of blood and heavy fuel oil. Is this related to the woman that uses this stuff? This was Cindy the Skull. 
Looks like Cindy the Skull finally found the words for her masterpiece. Lieutenant crouches, touching the fuel oil with his finger. Looks like it, yes. This is still fresh. It wasn't here yesterday. Oh, well, it's raining, so that's unfortunate for her. I smell heavy fuel oil. And blood. Some of it is even yours. Heavy fuel oil, isn't that flammable? What are you trying to imply, Aunt Fingers? You could buy some smoke, slide up a ciggy, and throw it in there. You know, just to see what happens. See if it's flammable. It's better that way. Safer. Interfacing, calm your ass down. Interfacing wants to burn it for fun, basically. Well, congrats, game. The body toll went a whole lot higher. Went from three deaths in this entire region over the course of a week to, uh, more. We've added seven more, I think. So it's ten. Everyone says you started crying in the middle of a firefight and then bled like a pig. I guess that was cool. I guess that's true. Cool, cool, cool. He nods along. That's very cool, Takuno. Just don't think because you got half your dick shot off and you're an invalid now, Kuno's going to treat you different. Kuno doesn't reward weakness. He says, looking at your pathetic limp. It's business as usual with Kuno. Kuno's cold like that. Feels good for some reason. Watch out, pig. It's a dangerous world out there, but Kuno's got his eyes on you. What's that supposed to mean? Kuno start, starts doing the I've got my eyes on you gesture repeatedly. Who knows? Hello, creepy little shit. I'll die before I squeal, pig. Hey, kid. What is this kid shit? Fucking mind games. I'd rather die than squeal. Get the fuck out of here, face! You got something? Talk to me! So it's a girl. Interesting. Thanks, reaction speed. You, uh... Not really speedy with your reactions, given how long ago we met this character, but okay. <clears throat> Can I get a cane? To put, to put in my hand? Like, I'll get, like, a multi-tool and a clipboard and stuff like that. Can I have a cane, please? I would like a cane. <clears throat> well, I saw a ruby, sir. My man, you're alive. Almost. Kind of. Sort of alive. I've been better. Man, what a day. I missed out on most of the action, but I heard it was quite the encounter. He nods thoughtfully. Had a strong sense of finality to it. So what's next? You guys heading back to Jamrock now? Talk is local union muscle were behind it all. I'd reckon the case is closed, even if it kind of turned into a shit show. I'm still looking around. Loose threads to tie up. Good luck with that, my man. Ain't easy being you, but hey. You're still breathing, right? You're not angry with me anymore? Fuck it. He shrugs. I'm a bad guy now. There's things more important than holding a grudge. It's okay. You've been through enough. We are what we are. And you're a cop. Right. I met the lady driver. On the investigation. Oh, I, I, I should read this line, actually. Shoot. He pauses, then chuckles all of a sudden. Sorry, man, didn't mean it like that. Ask, ask away. I met the lady driver on the investigation. She, she's called Ruby. Okay. He seems a little apprehensive. It is what? Is it wise to share information about the case like this, sire? Lieutenant throws you a quick glance. What are you doing? She slipped away. Oh. Good on her. And good on you, too. 
Better focus your efforts on the bad guys, mercs and such. Plenty of baddies to go around. And she didn't do it, believe me. If it's something bad, then she didn't do it. Didn't know her for long, but I know people. He's relieved. Alright, that's enough sharing details about the investigation for one day. Yep, Kim doesn't like it. But I feel bad about before, so it's, it's my apology. We all take turns having apologies, don't we? Precinct 57, we've been attacked. I repeat, Lieutenant Kim Kutsuragi and... Something is wrong. Only static hisses through the speaker. Hello? No reply. Only the mindless drone of static crawling through the air. It's been this way for a while now. Lieutenant shrugs. My guess is the Union is listening on our conversations and jamming outward communications to protect themselves from Cornell. It only happens when someone mentions the attack. The rest is unaffected. Our best bet is to carry on like nothing happened. That is, if we don't want us to cut... If we don't want us cut off the grid completely. Isn't that dangerous? No more dangerous than stepping between three armed mercenaries and eight Union men, I hope. He glances over his shoulder. I don't like it either, but that's the way it is. The streets seem safe enough to me. If anything, taking out to the mercs made things calmer, for now. He flicks off the radio. Silence. You can try calling again. Just don't mention the tribunal, and remember, they're listening in. Everything sounds okay. No drum beat of Total War yet. If anything, everything sounds too okay. I guess I should report that I found my gun. I just remember that I don't think I'd have. I have successfully located my 9mm Villiers pistol. It's on me now and I won't lose it again. 10-4, sir. Roger that. And very glad to hear it. I will make relevant changes to the report. Jules, I've heard that some people think of me as a La Puta Madre's peon. You think that I'm corrupted? 10-4, sir. There's a pause. And he seems to mull it over behind his enormous radio microphone. Well, there's been some talk, sir. He finally says, reluctantly. Some talk? What does it even mean that there's been some talk? Do they think I'm corrupt or not? I only mean that there's been some talk in the station, that's all. But there's always some talk in the station. You know how officers are in John Rock are. But then again, some of us truly are on the take. It's unfortunate. Over. They did not give me much to go on there. Alright. That's the end. New problem. Am I... Wait, was that completed? Hmm. I essentially didn't get an answer. It's ambiguous. God damn it, interface and calm down. <laughs> Sir, that might be flammable. We should we should we should light it on fire. Just you know, just to be safe. The racist is gone. <clears throat> Our goal is to get to the island, but it feels like it'd be wasteful not to like do a lap, essentially. See who's around. The entire picket line is gone. They probably scattered because of the danger, regardless. But I'm sure it helps that the person who is leading the whole thing. Oh, even she's gone. It certainly helps that the person who was leading the entire thing was actually a plant who is now dead. There's no one around. K-1 
Kim, what are you doing? Are you alright? <laughs> the boy Adiro stares at you with respect, then gestures towards the trickles of blood adorning your clothes. Yeah, I got shot. No big deal. Yet you live. He nods approvingly. It calls back to an older era, when this was commonplace. You have a true Boyadera heart. Right. So where is everyone? Hiding? Gathering themselves? The harbor's in full lockdown, friend. No getting in, uh, in or out for the time being. You can't tell me get inside? No, man. Not today. Today is war. He says it matter-of-factly, like it's no big deal. What's going to happen next? Time will tell. He shrugs. I'll tell Evrot you drop by. I'm sure he'll be glad. What will you be doing now? I'll be okay here, doing lookout. He surveys the red flags, draped from the harbor gates. Quite the sight, aren't they? Getting to like that red I am. Oh, I didn't even notice that. Don't worry about me. I live to alleviate the worries of our brothers. See if any other insane killers turn up. Then I'll run and live. Trying to get shot, huh? I'm sure I'll be luckier than you, friend. He grins. His grin is as wide as the desert. I didn't see those. Those are probably new, aren't they? The banners. This door is probably non-interactive now. Yep. <clears throat> Looks like a wave. I think it's meant to represent the fact that they're harbor people. What is that? A minor amount of money. Wasn't he guarding the door that opens... Yeah, isn't that it? That's the button that opens the front door, right? Huh. Is it... Does it just not work anymore? I'm just a little caught off guard by how Measure Hard... Measure Head... Measure Head's not guarding it. Hmm. I guess it's a good thing I did absolutely everything that I could, as far as I could tell. This was a change of state. The world is a, in a different place now, all around me. Also, I'm slower, so... Be a real bummer to have to, to do all that side questing. Like this. No. Mon Dieu, officer. It is worse than I thought. Believe me, I know all about that kind of pain. I've had heat trouble for the past week. He looks at your wounds. Oh, baby. It's time to slow down. Anything I can do to assist you? Enjoy life a bit. He smiles, apologetically. Nope. Nothing to follow up on now, though. Are you guys even open anymore? Is your kid still here? Did you send her away? Can you send her away? Your your little bookshop bookshop is on the precipice of a shootout. Oh my god, things have gotten out of hand. I thought the psychic stuff was bad, but the crime, it's even worse. I haven't been able to come to work for three days. The shop has been locked. No sales, gangbangers running around, shooting everyone. I know I shouldn't have bought a shop in this ghetto. Um... I'm the one who got shot here, ma'am. 
Oh my god, even the police can't take care of all this. Just look at that limp. Someone should do something about this. She rubs her pendant between two fingers, thinking. Maybe I should close the bookstore and open a psychic studio. Yes. She nods to herself. It makes sense. Crime is the sixth element, you see. The darkest element. I could teach people to protect themselves against the bad energies and to fight crime. Teach people how to fight crime at your psychic studio. Honestly, I'm not sure what to think of it. No, no, you're right, officer. You've convinced me. It is a great idea. Thank you for the inspiration. In the meantime, do buy the books. As many as you can. They won't be here for much longer. Determination shines in her eyes. Is there anything else I can help you with? Uh, this Dick Mullen book fell apart when I got to the end. Do you have another copy? Oh, I'm very sorry, sir. Some of these old paperbacks just don't have the durability. I would be happy to sell you another one, but unfortunately, that's the last copy we have in stock. She was going to sell it to me, not replace it. What, a, what kind of folks we have here? Pain threshold's what calls out to me. Hi, Ace Detective. Are you here for more books? Little girl, help. My Dick Mullen book ripped before I could get to the end. Do you know what happens? Which book was it, sir? Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity. Oh. She frowns. I'm very sorry, I haven't read that one yet. I wish I could help you. Aw, she's so helpful. Anyway, go back to sitting there next to the shootout. Your mom's about to ruin your life. She's just because she... Oop. Give up. You'll never find the answer. There's no other copy of Dick Mullen and the Mistaken Identity here. But why? Because that's how the world works. Some stories never get finished. You shouldn't expect there to be a tidy, satisfying ending. There's, there's got to be a way to solve this. There isn't. If only you had more time, more resources. Who knows what you could have come up with. Maybe if there had been more money and less speed. Or more speed. Or that, yes. Either way, you might have been able to come up with an answer, but not like this. Hang on, you can do this. Use your imagination. You know who the suspects are. Just make it up. So who killed Charlie Spillane and, and Deanna Deneuve, detective? Just fucking pick one. Fuck you, book. It was Dick Mullen. It still doesn't make sense, but who cares? Yes, Dick Mullen, the, the famous detective, killed his best friend and a dame he just nailed in cold blood. But why'd he do it? Unclear. Doesn't matter. The choice has been made. You caught the criminal. It was Dick Mullen all along. Who's the real detective now? That's right, it's you. Rest easy tonight, real detective. Fuck you, book. <laughs> So were we full sh were we foreshadowing the skulls as a faction? Are they going to be in the ending here? Or is it the skulls who did this in the first place? That stuff really leaks everywhere, doesn't it? Cindy. Cindy, where have you gone? Interfacing is what I do, come on. Oh wait, that's not interfacing, it's conceptualization. I, I, I saw a map wall, but that's referring to something else. I really still haven't finished this. See, it's a blue stat. Fuck it.
Let's destroy it. I've been through stuff. Let's see if I can finally come up with an idea here. I do like my drama stat. That's the best I can do, huh? Plus one whole point. <clears throat> Why am I looking at this wall? Why? Why can I never solve this wall? Why is this wall so hardcore? Why? What is this fucking futility that I'm facing? Fall to me, wall. Jesus. Because you see it. Finally. This wall is sublime. Look at it. The shadows. The colors. Let the conceptual joy flow into your pupils and blossom into the thoughts in your brain. All the other walls on all the other houses must make a pilgrimage in adoration of this. The uncontested pinnacle of wallcraft, color peeled from the very face of God. More. Oh, Wallfather. Like all father? Kim, I must paint this wall and add even more beauty to it. Huh? He sounds tired of it all. You already have the heavy fuel oil to use as paint. It's red. And Cindy the Skull has a paintbrush. This is on. First, I know you're tired, Kim. But take another look at this wall. Draw nourishment from its beauty. Mm. Sure. Lieutenant looks up at the wall, reluctantly, then back at you. I already have the paint. Just need to get a paintbrush from Cindy the Skull. He sighs. Then adds in a resigned tone. If you must. We need to feel things, Kim. Feel things. We also need to find Cindy, who is somewhere. Has anything changed in here, I wonder? Have you heard news about all this? Give me a moment. Nope. This is the 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 going ons have not phased her. She's a member of the skulls. So there's always been a red skull up here. Ah. No, stop running. Why'd you run? Well, this seems like a dead end. She took motor oil and the blood of everybody who was in the shootout including mine, mixed it up into paint, and then just left. And I guess that's that. So if we want that paintbrush now, we're going to have to hope for something else. Either another paintbrush, or we need to find her. No, I don't, I don't see her anywhere on the dock. 
No. So she might be somewhere further down the coastline. Or she might be on the island. What if the skulls were responsible? She left a message in blood after a shootout and then vanished. It's not exactly encouraging regarding her innocence. What a weird path. Oh, it's because there's, a, there's a, a fence here. Right. Between you and me, this is why I don't get involved in local politics. You're calling this politics? In its purest form. Now, what can I do for you? Why'd you have to get all political on me? I just want to stand in my room and stare at a wall forever. Politics? There has been no lack of politics in this game, but that was people taking revenge for somebody who got shot. Wow. Wow, what? A cop limping down the street, bleeding from the shoulder, face bruised, looking like hell? You know what that is? Cool. That's cool. He nods and settles back into the pile of boxes. Okay. That's his whole reaction is, wow, cool. I guess, buddy. Goodbye, Martinez proper. I'm not sure what else, what other use I'm going to have for you. One last check. Nope. I don't suppose anyone can tell me where Kunu threw my helm. I haven't been attendant to this guy, this lady's house for two days, but I've been keeping the keys. Somewhat on accident. Our tenant, the policeman. I hope the waves don't keep you up at night. What can I help you with? I got shot. I, even I can see that. I told you not to bring your trouble with you, policeman. We've got troubles of our own here. Though I suppose you took the worst of it. Turns out you were your own ill omen. The woman chuckles to herself. I guess you were right. The men with guns were coming after me after all. She nods. I'm not sure they, those were the last of the men with guns, either. There are always more coming for your kind, officer. Then we'll be ready for them. Goodbye. Boat, please. Officer, what happened? You're limping. Why are you limping? You look terrible. You're not limping, you're you.
I got shot in the foot? I got- I thought I got shot in the thigh. I did get shot in the thigh. Why does it say foot? I'm a cop. I don't merely exist in this world. I live between life and death. Everyone does that in a way. You don't have to get shot for that. <laughs> Fitting. Fair. She waves her hand dismissively. What happened to you anyway? We heard gunshots from the town. They were closer than usual. There was an exchange of fire on the Rue de saint guilaine It's nothing to be worried about, madame. You didn't only get shot. I dodged the second shot. I can also get not shot. Well, good for you. She smiles. Two dead, one in the hospital. I thought they were listed as old being dead. Oh, I know the woman was disarmed, right? No, I thought Kim said that he killed the woman. But the old guy was also said to be bleeding to death. I've lost, I've lost the count at this point. I have a question for you. Of course. Can I help you with something? Go on a date with another drunk. Jesus. We need to get to that island. That won't be a problem. It's wind still. And the tar just dried. She points to her skiff next to the jetty. We got two days of relative sunshine ahead. Can we borrow your boat? If you promise to bring it back, I know scraping the hull. I just got it nice and yellow, and no drinking on the boat. Her eyes narrow. And no joy riding either. Of course, ma'am. It's only for a day or two. Official police business. Aye, she nods. Not along, attentively. The crow's feet disappear from the corners of her eyes as she smiles at you. Two days of sunshine. I just got a bacterial infection. I'm sad to hear that. Take care of that with ether, will you? Don't get too many RCM men around here. Be sad to lose the first one. What's on that island? Nothing. Just ruins. Used to be some kind of fortification there before the war. But the communards. An anti-aircraft gun, I think. Bombed to bits in the landing. I haven't been there myself. Always steered clear of it. Hasn't been there herself. Who has then? You said you haven't been there yourself. Who has then if not you? My husband used to drink there. Him and his drinking buddies. Always seemed like a bad place to drink to me. People died there during the landing. You know, my mother told me. This must be one of the many fortifications that were used in the dying days of the revolution. Against coalition forces before they took the city. He looks around. The kids sometimes go there too. I know they do on rafts. I tell them not to, but they keep... But they bring back old bullet casings and such. Which kids? The twins. She points to two kids playing in the concrete yard. God forbid they bring the girl along on some rickety barge. And we maybe ask your twins about the place before we go. Would that be alright? Be my guest? She looks at the boys. They have a strange way of talking. See if you can get anything useful out of them. I seldom do. Is there anything I should know about getting there? Well, most of it's sunken, underwater. That means concrete underwater. Cut your boat if you're not careful. Be sure to enter from the south side. Water's deep there. Aye, aye, Captain. Thank you. We'll use your skiff to get there, then. She nods. Please be conservative with the fuel, will you? I just filled her up, but it's a small tank. Be seeing you. There we go. Just like that, we have access. Access that was always going to happen, no matter what we did. There's an inevitability to this, isn't there? We're trying to solve a mystery, but the big climactic change of state comes not from us, but from 
the continued escalation after X number of days passes, essentially. Although, in our case, I think it's tied directly to Ruby. That seems pretty obvious. But not in a story way, just like a game logic sort of way. And then our way to get to the island that might solve all of our our, our riddles and mysteries was just this lady that was been, that's just been tarring her boat all week. And that was going to happen sooner or later, no matter what. Hmm. The timing is funny there. Huh. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday. We had a weekend, basically. <laughs> we had the weekend off. All I had to do was get shot. <laughs> 